Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the second episode of the Academy on Air series for 2018. My name is Tom Gillespie and I'm an account strategist for the UK and Irish market based over here in Dublin. For today's episode, I'm really excited to be presenting to you uh, AdWords' smart bidding solutions and how we can be getting the most out of them for you. So just setting the scene, there are new ways to connect, uh, new ways to connect have created more customer touch points than ever before. These touch points bring more data signals which provide insights to the intent and the context of each individual user. Now, what does this mean for the future of advertising? Back in the good old days, setting up your online ad campaigns used to be pretty straightforward. You would do a little keyword research, choose your terms, and from there, the main focus was on simply managing keyword bids. However, but a few years ago, as the smartphone usage became more and more prevalent and small businesses optimised their local search listings, we've started to become more targeted. This led to a new emphasis on factors like location, interests and the type of device used in an attempt to drive better click-through rates and find a more engaged audience. So now the key to masterful bidding is to adjust your bids based on each unique user's combination of signals. Assessing and adjusting for these manually is a time consuming and impossible to do effectively, even for the most highly skilled account managers. So we know that there are almost too many variables to control for, and it makes staying in control completely time consuming. So what can we do to approach this challenge? So introducing machine learning, which is something become more and more prevalent within society and something that's powering our smart bidding solutions. So to kick things off, we're going to be going through how machine learning and smart bidding can help us in three key areas, which is how we can be working faster, how it's going to help us work smarter, and how we can be helping you win more. So kicking things off, how can uh, smart bidding help us work faster? So work faster with Google's powerful machine, le le machine learning capabilities. What it's helping us do is it's helping us evaluate data signals to proactively set optimal bids for every auction. It's helping enact real-time auction level bid adjustments for unparalleled optimization. And marketers are 50% more likely to increase investments in capabilities like machine learning. So here's a quote from Josh Sutton, the head of data and API from Publicist Sapient. The ability to automate more mundane machine-like functions makes marketers more effective and efficient at their jobs and able to focus on more high-level work like strategy in order to achieve better results. So the second area of focus in how uh, smart bidding is going to, sorry, I'm just a bit out of sync. So yeah, the second area in terms of how smart bidding solutions are going to help us work smarter so work smarter by automating routine tasks where we can be freeing up more bandwidth to be thinking strategically. So if you're looking at the left, you've got that large chunk of time being invested in what you're having to look after into the day-to-day -day minutia detail and bidding. Whereas when we're adopting smart bidding, that's going to be freeing up more time for bigger picture thinking on the right. So most importantly, we want smart bidding to help our partners and advertisers grow and how we can be winning more. So when using a smart bidding strategy, you can win more customers within your designated budget. So this will allow us to achieve a higher return on investment using an automated strategy, whilst it also allows you to maintain control of your, uh, maintain control of your spend by setting budget thread thresholds, target CPA, or a target return on ad spend goals, or max CPC bids. So I'll go through there we go. Um, so now let's take a look at the different types of smart bidding strategies to be tailored for your exact goals. Now we want these to be as tailored as possible for you guys. So we can see uh, on the screen right now, depending on kind of the campaign goal, we have a different solution, uh, a bidding strategy for that solution. And the bottom half, we can see your enhanced cost per click, maximized conversions, a target CPA and target ROAS. These are all within the suite of AdWords' smart bidding strategies and what we're going to do a deep dive into now. So looking at this chart, this is kind of giving us a spectrum in terms of what we can uh, expect to achieve based off the different type of bidding strategy. And over the, oh, it's lower, sorry, going a bit too quick. I'm out of sync on the clicking. There we go. 
We're all good. Perfect. Sorry, guys, going a bit too fast. Um, awesome. So just having a look at this slide, this is giving us a spectrum on your traditional uh, non-automated solution in terms of your manual bidding and then moving left to right across the spectrum of the different types of bidding strategies that we can use when powered by machine learning and what how they're going to help for particular campaigns. And good shout here in terms of, uh, I can see that it's just been uh, flagged up down the bottom. So in t especially for those advertisers who are using maybe a third party bidding tool, that doesn't rule out a smart bidding solution for us. We can uh, lay that on top with enhanced cost per click to get even better results. So I'm just clicking through. Oh, so there's a little animation. There we go. So uh, we've got the four different bidding strategies here, and now we're going to a deep dive in terms of setting the context around how these work, and then what is the most uh, relevant kind of like campaign uh, marketing goal to be used for. Great. So enhanced cost per click. So enhanced cost per click allows us to increase conversion count while maintaining control of max CPC bids. So in terms of going through here, this is all about in terms of driving efficiency while also allowing you to remain in control of base bids while still be uh, benefiting from a bid uh, bidding automation. Uh, it also works in tandem with various third-party bidding tools, bringing real-time auction level bidding to your existing uh, bidding solution, and it's available across search, display, and shopping campaigns. So when is the perfect scenario to be using enhanced cost per click? Uh, few, in terms of kicking things off, you'd be looking at when you want to be driving more convergence whilst maintaining control. Uh, it's also the perfect kind of solution when you're just, enter, uh, if you're maybe dipping your toe in the water towards a more kind of like smart bidding solution. Um, it's also probably the best fit when you're within the types of campaigns that you're managing have low conversion volume and is not yet eligible for the other bidding solutions just yet. And same thing where enhanced cost per click can really complement those advertisers who are using a third party bidding tool and want to take advantage of the auction time bidding capabilities. So moving right along, we have max, uh, maximized conversions. Now, this is currently only available on search and uh, we want you to stay tuned for more information when it, uh, uh, when it becomes available on display. So maximize conversions is looking to drive as many conversions as possible within your specified budget. Now, it's leveraging the machine learning and the algorithms are continually learning from user behavior to ensure the highest bid accuracy. It gives you more time to focus on strategic initi initiatives by eliminating the guesswork from bid optimization and it's currently available for campaigns opted into the search network. So when to be using them? Uh, if your goal is to be driving more conversions within your current budget, uh, if you don't have a specific CPA uh, cost per acquisition goal in mind and your focus is just getting as many conversions as possible, uh, it's also perfect for when your campaign has received a minimum of 15 conversions over the last 30 days. And uh, it's also quite helpful if your campaign has been limited by budget and you have over 90% impression share. Uh, the next one on the list is the target CPA bidding strategy. So this is driving uh, more conversions without surpassing your predefined cost per acquisition. So much like the ones previously, it's using machine learning as well, and it's eliminating the guesswork and it's available across search and display. In terms of when to be using it, it's uh, for those type of advertisers when your goal is to drive as many conversions at a specific CPA. So if clients have said that they want margins that we need to be hitting over a certain time period and we've got the budget to do so and, and we're not maxing out at impression share, target CPA is going to be your best friend. Um, it's also the, these opportunities are also able to surface uh, within the AdWords opportunities tab. And last but not least, we have the target return on ad spend. So this is all about getting the highest conversion values possible at a specified return on ad spend that you've set. Now, this enables you to weigh each individual conversion action based on the total value it provides to your business. And it is available across search, display, and shopping campaigns. 
and is optimized against conversion value to, uh, to offer a revenue focused bidding option that delivers the highest bang for your buck. So when is the perfect scenario to be using target ROAS? This would be when your conversions vary in value and you want to get as much value as possible um, for your maybe uh, set ROI goals. And also uh, it's firing on all cylinders when your campaign has a sizable conversion volume, which we would hope to be looking for for somewhere maybe uh, a little under around about 100 a month. So the type of advertisers who, who I've seen kind of the best results with target ROAS is definitely your more kind of like retail focused clients and thinking shopping campaigns. So now that we've done uh, a look through in terms of the different types of smart bidding strategies and where they're the most appropriate for your different campaigns and goals, now we're going to go th uh, do a bit of a walkthrough in terms of how you can set yourself up for success and factors to be considering if we're moving towards uh, applying a smart bidding strategy to one of your campaigns. So first three steps, we're going to look at planning, implementation, and how we're going to measure that success. Where are we? Are we on? Sorry, I can't tell. Measure and plan. Perfect. Sorry, um, just lost my place there. So, in terms of the planning phase, we want to select the best campaigns to move to smart bidding. Um, we recommend moving towards a full bidding automation, which means applying a smart bidding strategy to every campaign in your account. That said, we don't expect you to move everything all in one go. Start by transitioning campaigns in your account for which smart bidding will unlock the greatest opportunity. So looking into kind of like what are the factors that we're looking at and the, some of the guidelines. So this is just in its most simplest form, kind of like these key areas of what we want to be looking at in terms of our existing campaigns um, before venturing down the path of the smart bidding strategy. So. The guideline, the campaigns that we want to be looking for is those that have 70% less impression share and are not budget constrained. Ideally, we're going to see a high conversion volume and the suggested conversion delay would be less than seven days. So in terms of answering about why we're kind of looking at these particular criteria, so why do we want to have uh, less than 70% impression share is because these campaigns have more flexibility to grow and capture additional demand and therefore they, more, uh, they offer more uplift potential. Uh, in terms of why we don't want to be applying to a campaign that is limited, we'd be missing out on valuable conversions and instead giving them away to your competitors. So by uncapping your budget with smart bidding, you'll get even more conversions while maintaining a strong return on your investment. In terms of why we want to be seeing something with a high conversion volume, our algorithms work best when they have large quantities of data to analyze and learn from. To leverage our most sophisticated bidding strategies, which are target CPA and target ROAS, your campaigns must meet the minimum conversion requirements. And finally, in terms of why we want to be seeing those conversions coming through in less than seven days, um, a long conversion delay can make it hard for the target CPA algorithm to make predictions. So a long conversion delay could, could lead to a poor performance. A short delay isn't a requirement. However, since most advertisers still see good performance with long delays as well. So just in terms of a couple pro tips as well, um, ensure that the conversion volume is sufficient to minimize performance fluctuation and learning period. Please be mindful of recommended conversion volume prior to implementation of your target CPA or target ROAS campaigns. So in terms of your average, looking over kind of like the last 30 days and the volume of conversions that you've had through, this is what we would expect how long the learning period would take as well as the CPA fluctuation. So the more data that we're able to feed it and as well as the more conversions coming through, the quicker that learning period is going to be and the lower it's going to be in terms of seeing that CPA fluctuation in the early stages. Finally, um, if you haven't already discovered these, use the AdWords Opportunity tab to automatically identify those campaigns that are the best fit for an AdWords smart bidding strategy. Now, second step in terms of uh, what we can be doing from an implementation point of view. 
So uh, when we're looking at kind of the best practices to be following, uh, automated bidding solutions work best when applied to campaigns that follow these practices above. Now, while none of these items are a prerequisite for smart bidding, we highly recommend leveraging the following best practices, which will strengthen your bidding accuracy and performance. So in terms of uh, from left to right, we're looking at making sure that our campaigns have enabled three or more expanded text ads per ad group. We want to be making sure that we've applied the relevant uh, applying lists for any audience groupings that you wish to target at a campaign or ad group level. We want to ensure each ad group is focused around a specific theme and directs to a singular landing page. And the fourth area is that we want to make sure that we've set a realistic target near the historic campaign performance. So what we've seen from a CPA over the last 30 days, this ensures a faster ramp up time um, in the initials phases. And then um, once the, uh, it's had that machine, uh, the learning under its belt, you can gradually adjust the target to a desired level. So in terms of the first uh, focus in, oh, so we've got an animation coming up. There we go. Um, so in terms of the factors about why we want to be seeing those three ads per ad group, um, this means that the system can test variations, ensuring the most relevant ad is being shown to the right users at the right time. So we're just uh, giving ourselves a greater roster to play with. And this is also relevant for when it comes to the display side of things. So we want to just, uh, just like a search campaign, we'd be seeing three expanded text ads with display. Um, we want to be making sure we've enabled responsive ads in each of your ad groups. So those, what we've found is advertisers have particularly seen a 15% increase in reach at a similar performance compared to just the standard ads. Now... Where are we going? Perfect. So moving along to the display, uh, to the audience side of things, we want to make sure that we've applied the audience list that we want to be targeting at a campaign. Now, have I jumped? Sorry, I've jumped. There we go. Um, uh, perfect. So the reason that we want to be making sure that we've applied the relevant audience lists is uh, to the campaigns uh, and ad groups that we want to be targeting is because this allows the algorithms to automatically account for rich user signals. So when I'm talking about rich user signals, I'm talking about intent, content, uh, context, recency, and, there, and then therefore it's going to adjust the bids accordingly for that valuable audience. So. It's also good to keep in mind, audience recency is now a smart bidding uh, signal. So it's going after that right user who's shown the strongest level of intent. Ooh. Now, yep, we've done that, we've done that. Great. Right. Now, in terms of why we want to be keeping the ad groups focused around a particular theme, a uh, distinct ad group allows you to make them more targeted with your keywords and ad copy, and it means users only see ads that are most relevant to them. Now, uh, in, and then the final piece of the puzzle in terms of what we want to be making sure when we're implementing is that we've set that campaign near the current campaign performance. Now, so by this means is we're, when we're first starting things off, we want to be looking at the last 30 day average of your CPA to set as a starting point within that uh, target CPA goal. This ensures a faster ramp up time. It doesn't mean that we're handcuffed to sticking with that CPA. We uh, Over time, once the learning period is done, we can look to uh, reduce the, the target CPA goal to work towards, but it's gotten a lot of all the growing pains out of the way early. So, um, things to be keeping in mind when implementing smart bidding. So just as I mentioned before, make sure we're setting car, uh, the targets carefully in using target CPA. And we, um, the second one in terms of uh, once implemented, uh, please limit the number of changes made to your campaign immediately after transitioning to a smart bidding solution. The reasons uh, behind this is that every time we make an adjustment during the learning period, the algorithm has to adapt. So we recommend waiting until your learning period is over before making changes to your campaign and updating or updating your landing pages. Moving forward, we recommend making changes gradually as to prevent the campaign from going back to the learning mode and having to reset the shot clock. 
So the th uh, third thing to keep in mind is avoid immediate analysis of the smart bidding performance. And this is because the algorithms need time to learn and adjust to meet your campaign goals. What we recommend is waiting until after the machine learning period is complete to then get an accurate understanding of your performance. So the final piece of the puzzle is being mindful of seasonality trends. So while we recommend um, the short term sales and seasonal events often result in a sudden drastic shift in performance, which can impact your smart bidding algorithms. All strategies respond differently to large increases in volume. So there is no need to adjust your bidding based on volume spikes. So the final piece, once kind of like entering into a smart bidding strategy is then making sure that we're going to measure it the right way. So to get an accurate understanding of performance with smart bidding, it's important that you don't run your analysis too soon. So the two things that we want to be factoring in um, before assessing the performance of how the smart bidding strategy has worked for us. So uh, the learning period and then the time lag for conversions. So when it comes to the learning period, our algorithms are constantly learning and adjusting to meet your needs. The more stable long-term data points they have, the better they can form predictions and optimize to meet your goals. It typically, ta it typically takes one to two weeks for the algorithm to calibrate for a newly implemented bid strategy, although this largely depends on the amount of conversion data present. Uh, the second one is to be factoring in in terms of the time lag for conversions. So most clicks don't result in an immediate conversion that we've seen historically within your accounts. Now, know your standard time. We want you to understand your standard time lag for conversions, i.e. the average time it takes for a click to result in an online conversion and factor this into the waiting period uh, to ensure you're, uh, you're gauging conversion performance accurately. So when it comes to search campaigns, we want to identify your time lag. You can identify your time lag by visiting the search attributions report and setting a 30 day window and looking back at the conversion lag from the first click. For when it comes to display campaigns, set your date range to a 90 day window and segment your campaign level conversion data by days to conversions. This data will be able to help you calculate your average conversion lag. So after you've allowed sufficient time for the algorithm to learn and your conversions to register, you can begin to analyze your performance. And here are a few ways about doing so. So the first one is the target metric comparison. So consider how your target metric has changed since implementing smart bidding. Are we closer to your overall marketing goals? The second way in terms of evaluating the bidding performance is with drafts and experiments. So this feature allows you to test and measure the impact of automated bidding on your account by running two nearly identical campaigns simultaneously. The only difference between these campaigns is that one will be opted into smart bidding and the other will be opted into manual bidding. Now the final one is in terms of how we can be evaluating the performance is the pre and post metric analysis. So review how we go about doing this is reviewing the performance from two weeks before switching to smart bidding to that of two weeks after the waiting period. So Compare, what we want to be looking at is uh, comparing the performance of your key metrics in these two windows. And that's where we would want to be looking to be seeing the improvement. And keep in mind there are uh, many additional variables that could be influencing these metrics, i.e. a seasonality. So it's good to be aware of that. So then we're comparing kind of apples to apples. Great, so next steps. So what can we be doing now? What can we be doing in the immediate future? And then what can we be doing in the longer plan? So first things first, we wanna be identifying the campaigns that are a good fit for smart bidding and select the best solution for each of those campaigns. So once you've identified those campaigns, we then wanna apply them at a campaign level. And then if we're still unsure in terms of seeing the results or wanna be uh, taking a kind of like a dipping a toe in the water approach, we could try their campaign drafts and experiments. So uh, normally after we would be allowing three to four weeks before assessing the performance, we can review the bidding performance um, in the last two weeks, so the post learning period, and then comparing that to the two weeks before, so as I was talking about earlier, making sure that we've kind of uh, allowed for the control period in the middle and then uh, comparing the best results. And then um, going forward, if we're, uh, you can make the minor adjustments to your settings. 
Perfect, so overall, smart bidding solutions are gonna help us work faster, work smarter, and win more. And um, we're gonna kick things off to see if, uh, thanks so much for putting up, uh, putting up with me. Sorry again for the confusion between the slides and uh, happy to see if there's any questions coming through. Perfect. Awesome. Yep. So uh, again, sorry for kind of probably going a bit too quickly through that. Uh, they will be able to watch the video with the same link at any stage and they can also reach out to, you can also reach out to your Google account strategist to uh, discuss smart bidding in uh, further detail. And um, I think that just about wraps it up. So, what are we? Oh, it's this animation. Perfect. So, sorry, guys. Um, so, I've been brought undone by the. <laughs> <laughs> the animation in my slides. Uh, so the main three things that we want to be taking away with the benefits on the the benefits around moving to a smart bidding solution is we've uh, seen the benefits of how we can be working faster, working smarter, and winning more for our advertisers. Perfect, so we've got a uh, question from Mike in terms of explaining the difference between maximized conversions and a target CPA strategy. So very good question, Mike. In terms of uh, when we would be choosing between the two, uh, maximized conversions is gonna be a few things uh, where like if I'm looking for a campaign, what's the best fit? Uh, a maximized conversion strategy would be one where we haven't got a, a desired CPA goal that we're working towards and we're just trying to get as many conversions through the door as quickly as possible. Now, it's also a better fit for when you have a campaign when you're being limited by budget. Now, the reason that is, is because we want to maybe uh, potentially find out what is that ideal and realistic CPA that we're working towards whilst working within very confined parameters from a budget. Now, the other option of then why we would, when we would choose a target CPA approach is when there is a, a small amount of, we're already, we're competing in a lesser amount of impression share and there's maybe a particular target CPA that's either been set by the business or, or the clients in terms of that you were working towards hitting and trying to drive as much volume for it. So I would say probably the biggest difference would be when we're looking to making sure if, if the campaign's being limited by budget, by budget or not, because a target CPA campaign uh, ideally wants that higher level of a budget cap, so then it's got that room to grow. Um, so uh, a question from, uh, I'm very sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, Yaviga. Um, how long do I have to wait for the campaign to show true statistics? So we would normally be allowing from implementation until a reporting side of things, we would allow on average four weeks. So even though that uh, target CPA goals could be getting hit faster and the, and the fluctuation and the learning period might be much shorter, Normally, on average, four weeks is enough time to allow. Um, Mina, can you provide uh, us detail on how to use the time lag conversion method? So I think, yes, very good question. I went through a bit too quickly and it probably, again, um, running through the slides. You're going to be able to see it within the search attribution section within your account. So we're looking at uh, going from the, depending on like which interface you're on within the AdWords uh, uh, user uh, interface, you'd be going into either kind of like the wrench or the tool section and then going to the search attribution overview page. And then whilst that's going to give you a few key stats, that's going to, uh, one of them is what you're going to be looking for is the average days to conversion. So that's one area. And then you can also be looking in, in the, on the left hand side, you'll be going to paths and then time lag uh, or time length, uh, path length. And that will give you an average uh, of, it will give you an overview in terms of the last 30 days, how long it has taken your users to be converting from a, a time point of view, and then an overall average. So if your average days to conversion is two days, then we would be allowing say a week or so during that machine learning uh, from implementation, then allowing 
the machine learning phase uh, allowing two days. So that time lag of two days, because that still may be capturing conversions that have performed previously before implementing the smart bidding strategy, and then the learning period, and then that post two, three week analysis. Um, okay, so from, uh, again, uh, very sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, uh, Craig, uh, or Craig, um, from where can we find the smart bidding in the Google AdWords campaign? So we want to be looking for it in the opportunities tab. So depending on if you're in the, the uh, Using my photographic memory, you'd be looking kind of in the in the new AdWords interface. We'll be looking in the down the left hand margin. There's going to be the overview and then opportunities tab. Uh, that will give you an account level opportunities. And then if you wanted to find out if this campaign was a good fit for a smart bidding strategy, we would then be jumping into. You can jump into the. Uh, the specific campaign, and then within that selecting in that left-hand margin, this is in the in the new interface. Be going into the uh, opportunity section, and that will prompt you on whether it deems it's we can be seeing an uplift in performance with a smart bidding strategy or not. Um, I'll just scroll through to see if we've got any more questions. Awesome. So um, we have, uh, okay, Elliot, how would you effectively manage target CPA based on a specific conversion? If, uh, say, if you had multiple conversions which are a varying value. So very good question, Elliot. What I would want to be kind of factoring in would then be uh, first checking, like, are we including those conversions in the conversions column? So there might be some that might not be that might be more valuable than others. So maybe an email submission is then worth, or a lead is worth more than a phone call. First, I would want to be making sure that the the value of that conversion action is reflective in the account. So then we know that we're bidding to the higher value uh, targets. Um, the other one in terms of, um, um, I'm just, let me think, how would I effectively manage targets on a specific conversion action? Mm. So yeah, it, would, it would mostly be making sure that we're then, um, yes, making sure, uh, just to repeat the question, how would you effectively manage target CPA based on a specific conversion? That one, we want to be making sure that we have the value of that conversion pulling through into AdWords so then it know that it's bidding on those higher value uh, customer interactions. Alternatively, if it was more on like kind of the retail focused, that may be where a target ROAS bidding strategy would be more effective because then it's going to go after those higher value items and uh, optimize towards that. Um, okay, so we let's go. I'm just scrolling through. Um, we've had a couple repeats on other questions, kind of consistent themes popping up. Uh, we've got one from Vaughan. When using smart bidding, is it ideal to have a maximum daily budget or, or would you still result using, or would you still get results using a minimum amount? So when setting your campaign budgets uh, and uh, considering whether to be utilizing a maybe like a target CPA approach, for example, what I would want to be making sure is that that budget uh, for the campaigns, if we've opted a campaign into, say it's a hundred pound campaign and you want to be driving conversions at 20 pounds, that means that during that uh, initial learning phase of that campaign, you could only potentially see maybe like in an ideal scenario, like five conversions come through. Obviously, it would try and drive through more, but that would be playing within the ceiling of that budget. You could maybe, you could be consistently hitting it five times. So that's why it's uh, a target, a, 
an automated bidding solution is always going to be trying and getting you more conversions. Like with a, a target CPA bidding model, is going to try and work as hard as possible to uh, work towards the target CPA that has been set. Um, if not perform better at, at a incremental uplift, it's then factoring around. We're not going to if it's then only playing with a very small budget for for that campaign. It's going to really restrict. Uh, it's going to really restrict the performance of that campaign in the the learning phase, which is so important. So. Um, So, uh, so from Pradeep, uh, what are different benefits in optimizing using smart bidding? How can I confidently go to smart bidding in ads, ad groups, CPA or, uh, or CPC? So in terms of for any advertisers that are maybe still unsure about moving towards a smart bidding strategy, I would always recommend either starting, uh, starting out either with enhanced cost per click, that's probably the one where you're still uh, retaining a high level of control on the bids or alternatively setting up a drafts and experiments where you can take it at a campaign level and uh, split out 50-50 uh, or however the case may be, but splitting out your budgets in terms of how much we would want to allocate to a smart bidding solution, whether that be target CPA or, EC or enhanced cost per click, uh, versus manual bidding. So I would be all, uh, either of those two drafts and experiments are going to be your best friend. Okay. Um, perfect. So we've got if uh, uh, also. So another question that we've got here: If you were below the recommended threshold to use target CPA at campaign level, would it be beneficial to convince all ad groups into a single campaign so there is more to work off? If there is no value, we could set them, i.e. if there is no value, uh, we could just set them as we could see fit, e.g. a lead equals uh, $100 and an email is £20. Would it work that way? Uh, so in terms of setting the value to those conversion actions, that's giving us an understanding in terms of like the return on investment. Um, and we could and could potentially be working to uh, implementing a target row strategy there. So we want to be then chasing the high. Uh, we want to be it will be optimizing towards the leads which are worth more, as opposed to an email. In terms of the question of pulling them all into one campaign, I would still be looking at like earlier in the presentation in terms of which goes into greater detail. And I know that I probably was through it a bit too quickly, but just to be getting the kind of the textbook answer, I wouldn't want you to create like uh, meshing up a campaign all into one. I'd still be very strict around that we're following very strict themes per ad groups. Um, And then just seeing if we've got any others coming through. Uh, great question from Iona in terms of when and why do you recommend using a portfolio strategy rather than a normal smart bidding at campaign level? It's more to kind of like uh, give the advertiser like just as much control as possible. And then it's also able to maybe uh, potentially like isolate for all the different variables that may be at play. So then you can kind of like factor that all in your side and then uh, apply that to other campaigns at scale. Awesome. So uh, that looks like the end of the questions there. But um, thanks so much for your time. And again, just wanting to remind you that the um, they can watch the video again and access to the presentation with the link, or you can always reach out to your Google account strategist going forward. Thanks for your time.